Hi, welcome to Monterey's Cooking. Today I have a very special guest with us today, Johnny Rivers. Welcome. Good to see you John. again, John. Well, you've seen him on the show before. He's done some singing. And it's well, you actually coined some good phrases, too. Oh, yes. Oh, concert. yeah. Uh, what was that one? Uh, well, the one is you were cooking some, yeah, I think it was tuna or something. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I said, you know, and he, and he had me taste it. You yeah. know? And I said, well, you know, John, you can tune a car, you can tune a guitar, but you can't tune a fish. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. I don't know if my nephew <laughs> said he heard it. They saw it, and all the kids around school were saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. That was a long time ago. That was, was fun. Yeah. Well, you know, John, you have been uh, just in the singing scene for a long time, and you know, you're also a composer too, which is. Uh, I do write. Uh, not as much as I should, probably, but we, uh, I write with uh, some different writing partners from time to time. We actually wrote a theme song for this television show, Seventh Heaven. It's been on for quite a while now, doing very well. Good. And uh, my record of uh, Secret Agent Man was, you know, Austin Powers in the yes. movie, which is a big cult thing now. Yes. All the kids yeah. are into it. Yep. It was in Bowfinger, the Steve Martin, Eddie Murphy movie. So. Yeah. Well, stuff is timeless. It just it just keeps going. I mean, uh, you have a great history with uh, with some of the nightclubs like uh, Whiskey a Go Go. And well, tell that's, us about that. Well, that's I mean, I, op I opened the Whiskey in January '64. I was actually playing at another place, and I got approached on the idea uh, by uh, one of the uh, owners, uh, a man named Elmer Valentine, who had been to Paris. Uh, on a vacation and saw the original discotheque called the Whiskey Gogo -Go in Paris. Ah. And so when he, he said, I want to get this place on Sunset and call it the Whiskey Gogo. -Go. And, and, and I said, well, what kind of name is that? And he told me the story. You know? <laughs> and he said, I want to play records in between your sets, you know, so people can keep dancing. And actually, so it was the first wow. actual disco in the United States, uh -huh. aside from me playing there. And then I recorded a live album there and mm -hmm. it became a big hit and we kept going from there. And that's what really got things that's going amazing. for me. Prior to that, you know, I had my own band in Baton Rouge, and we used to play all around South Louisiana and Texas and oh Mississippi and around in there. But your music, you have a little Western, there's a little... In Just a little bit. It's mainly R&B, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I grew up with, mm -hmm. you know, Fats Domino and, right. and Bobby Blue Bland and oh, yeah. Ray Charles, B.B. King, you know, mm -hmm. guys like that. Yeah. Fabulous. Um, well, you think maybe we could hear a song? Well, sure. All right. <laughs> uh, this is one from the 60s. That was one of my favorite songs, too. Yeah, Man, I remember yeah. that one so well. Um, John, you like wine. Uh, I've been sure. known to drink it on occasion. Yeah, every <laughs> once in a while, I know. Um, our sponsor today is Shy Vineyard. And uh, we're going to take a little trip down to this wine tasting room and uh, we're going to throw us around. Okay.
Well, we're down at the tasting room. Uh, everyone say hi, Scott. Scott Scheid and Kurt Goldnick. Good to see you, John. And Scott, of course, the president of Scheid Vineyards. And Kurt is in charge of all great production. That's correct. Okay, boys, let's hear what you have to say about yourselves. Well, John, we're, uh, we're a very large grape producer. We have almost 6,000 acres of wine grapes. Wow. And we're a, we're a, a specialty grower. We grow for um, a lot of uh, North Coast wineries like Mondavi, Behringer, mm -hmm. Niebaum Coppola, as well as our uh, local friends like uh, Shalom, Bernardus, uh, Gioris, Morgan Winery. Wow, that's amazing. These yeah, are, I was yeah. going to say our market niche really, John, is to, um, to address our customers' special needs. So we, we take the, uh, the uh, responsibility of growing the grapes all the way to the final premium quality that they're looking for to put into their label. Mm -hmm. And we handle each customer as a very special individual. Amazing. Well, you know, we're lucky enough to have your wines on our list at the, at the restaurants. And folks, if you're lucky enough to find these anywhere, you have to try them. They are definitely, definitely worth worth a try. Um, now, if people want to order these wines? Well, you can, in, in our wines, we make a very small amount mm -hmm. of, this is really to keep our grape growing quality up there, and it's mm -hmm. just a, a small amount that we make, less than a half percent of our production. Wow. Um, at your fine restaurants, John, and a few in the peninsula and in this tasting room, but, but now you can get them at uh, shidevineyards.com. We've added a little section to our, our website called the Wine Basket. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's some gifts there and wine baskets as well as uh, all our wines. Okay. And to get to the tasting room from Monterey or to get to the tasting room? We're about, we just came down here, we're about 45 miles uh, south of, mm -hmm. the, um, of the peninsula, straight down Highway 101. And it's right on the corner here of uh, Hobson Avenue. It's about five miles south of Greenfield and uh, 10 miles north of King City. Okay. And there's also other wineries around, so if people want to make a whole day of it, they can visit other wineries that are all close by, and it makes for a beautiful day. And we got the maps right here. You can Perfect. start off here Great. and work your way back to Monterey. Good. Works, works real well. Um, now, Kurt, are you doing something very unusual that uh, is next door? Uh, you want to tell us about that? You bet. I've got a little tour for you today. Good. We're going to take you to a demonstration vineyard that's uh -huh. a part of this wine tasting room, just a short walk out back. And in that demonstration vineyard, we'll be able to show you how we prune and do other cultural practices to improve the quality of our wine grapes to, again, to supply our customers. We're in the demonstration vineyard, folks, and let me remind you of something here. This is December, okay, in California, all right? And you <laughs> might see a little wind here, but there, it plays a very important part in our vineyards here. Uh, Kurt, explain, please. Yeah, well, John, what happens every afternoon during the growing season mm -hmm. is the winds come up and blow down this valley um, in the Salinas area, Salinas Valley. And those winds, what they do is they bring cooling air from the ocean. Mm -hmm. Those cooling air, that cooling wind that comes through delays the maturity of our grapes as we grow them in Monterey County. It's that delayed maturity that allows for additional hang time of the grapes and allows for greater uh, flavor extraction from our grapes than you would find in other growing regions. So very the wind good. is very favorable to high quality. Okay, very good. Now, let's, let's explain to us from the, from the bottom up about I the sure vine. will. Good. Well, these vines were planted, this vine in front of us was planted about four years ago. And we put in a little vine here and grafted it. And we started training up that young vine over the period of a couple of years. When we get up here in this portion of the vine, you can see these green ties. We develop what they call a cordon. And so this vine is trained in what they call a bilateral cordon system. And cordon in French means arm. And so what we do this time of year, John, is we start pruning these vines to get ready for next year's crop. So let me point out to you something here that's very important to understand. On, on the vine right here, you have a bud. And these buds have to be spaced appropriately along the cordon in order for the fruit to develop uh, spaced properly so it's not overcropped and so that we can get full development, full characteristic of the ripe fruit. So what I'm going to do for you now is I'll prune through and show you what we try to do during the winter time. So I make a cut there, leaving behind a spur. So this is a cordon spur pruned vine. I'll go ahead and cut these little spurs down. And then we have something that's growing out of position. I'll remove that so we don't have fruit that's inferior. And come through here. And once again, leave buds. 
this. So this is a pruned cordon. Very, very interesting. Okay, folks, there you have it. Very interesting. I hope we learned something. You know, I learned how to bud. That's right. Right above, and you cut it. And you know, we have some um, some grapes around here, and I cut them now. You know, now I just boop boop. I know exactly what to do. Okay. Being that's a nice cold day, and uh, you know, I thought a nice stew with just with those beautiful reds that they make down there. I'm going to do a whole different thing on stew meat. Okay. Instead of doing short ribs, what I did is I went and got some country. Spare ribs, okay? This is pork, all right? These are called the country-style spare ribs. But look at this. It's all meat. There's some bone in it because I like the flavor that the bone adds. So what you're going to do is cut these in nice pieces. And, I mean, this can't, you can't find a better, a better winter dish than this. I'll tell you that. And was it Johnny Fantastic? Boy, he is sure a talent. He was just, just great. Okay, I'm gonna cut these. I'm gonna cut these rather big because I like, uh, I like instead of the little chunks. Okay, now we're gonna go flop, salt first, and then a little flour, go right into the pan. Little pepper. Now what I'm doing is adding the flour so that I want to make sure we get a little gravy out of this. I don't want it to be a soup. Plus, that'll add to the caramelizing. Yeah, that's easy. Very important tip, folks. Salt the meat. Salt and pepper the meat before you, you fry it. Because otherwise, you know, I recently was down in Fisherman's Wharf here, and I made a big, giant paella. Get this. 35 pounds of seafood, 35 pounds of rice, 15 gallons of stock, and it was all in one big plate, and it was supposed to be enough to serve 400, and I think we exceeded that because we just served tastings, and you know what? I didn't put enough salt in it. <laughs> well, this goes to show Americans like the salt, because people are saying, it was good, but you know what? You need a little salt. So, you know, a little salt does bring out the flavor. We know we're not supposed to eat too much of it, but what the heck. Okay. This we brown, we brown this real good. It takes a few minutes. Okay. this folks so see this is what I'm looking for don't put it too high you're gonna burn everything so see look how nice that is this is gonna give that a nice flavor return it now you know pork is I've been eating a lot of pork lately besides beef but because pork is so delicious and you know they're starting to breed pork again uh, well, there's a fat on them. You know, the, the, the public wanted all this non-fat non stuff. But when there was no fat, there was no flavor. So now there's these little, these little farmers that are raising pork that have flavor again. You know, and I, we're using them at one of our restaurants. And uh, boy, it tastes like, remember how pork used to taste, a pork chop used to taste so delicious? They're coming back. Just don't eat them every day. You know what I mean? You don't have to eat them every day. Okay, this takes another few minutes. What you gotta do is give it a little, and we're gonna use our Merlot from size. We're gonna brown it off. I want that to reduce a little bit. Okay, and this time, usually I would, I would um, you know, saute my vegetables off, but this time I'm not gonna do it. You ask me why? I have no reason. Okay, what I've got here are mushrooms, carrots, Leeks, onions, 
new potatoes. You can use any kind of potato you want. Right inside. Now, what I'm doing here is I got some whole coriander and uh, I've got some anise seed. Okay, I'm putting it in a coffee grinder that I use. And I use this for fresh herbs. See how nice that works? Beautiful. Okay, so we got, mmm, smells delicious. Okay, here's some chopped garlic. We'll put some of that. We're going to put some of this a little at a time. See, this has a, oh man, I don't know, very nice flavor. Okay, salt. Pepper, a little, little hot pepper. Okay, then we're going to add the wine. Look how nice that looks. Basically, I'm making a stew, but I'm making it, you know, the potatoes are in there. This way you don't have to do a mashed potato or a mashed turnip or a... Um, uh, polenta. This is all. This is going to be a one dish, crusty French bread, and uh, some more of the wine, a salad, and you got yourself the most simplest meal in the world. And you know this pork isn't real expensive either. And top it up. You know we need the just to barely cover it with the wine. All right. That's and that looks just right. Okay. We may want to add something else. Just a little bit of. This is not toothpaste. This is tomato paste in, a, in, the, in these squeeze tubes that are great because you never use a whole one, you know? Okay, you just blend that in. That'll, it's going to deepen the color a little bit. Sometimes I like to fry that, and that really gives it some nice and deep flavor. But again, let's go simple today. You don't have to go fancy all the time. Okay, that goes like this. Get it to high, let it start to boil, and then put it down to medium. And it's gonna need a good hour, hour and a half checking. We want that meat to just literally, literally fall off the bone. Okay, when we come back, I'm gonna put the dish together for you. Sometimes, you know folks, you do the little tiny things is what really creates the, the, the fabulous dinners that are memorable, okay? Look at this. See? The toasted bread. Okay, that's almost ready. Now, get some fresh garlic. I've showed you this one before. This is, you know, this is the original garlic bread. I mean, this is the original stuff. Make sure you put a little salt on it. And you know, I put a little bit of oil Let's see. Yeah, we see we don't want it to be real hard. Okay, this will be hot enough. Let's move that this way. Let's bring this guy in. Now let me show you what this should look like. Okay, now here's your stew. Okay. Now look at this pork stew. Look at this. We well, gotta look at this. Now, I guess this is for the men here. Let's see, this is about right for you guys. Okay, that's a, that's a nice, that's a man-sized portion. Now, give it a good shot of black pepper because that wine in the back, black pepper is gonna work like crazy. Now, this is a combination of parsley and fresh garlic. This is He-Man food, let me tell you. Okay, that goes there, like that. Now you get the toast, you get the garlic, and see how it melts in there? Woo-hoo, is it hot? Okay, that's one. See, it's gonna dissolve all that garlic. Make sure you cut that garlic so it goes on easy. 
too. I tell you, it's the little things that you do at home, not the big things, it's the little things. And this, I mean, you just transform a simple, simple little stew dish into something really exciting. Look at this, we got this, we got this. There's some of the nice thyme. Okay, then of course, got some new glasses. Aren't these beautiful? Look at that. You know what? We did a tasting with cheap glasses and good glasses. And these are, they're called the Rydal. These are very expensive. You know, but you know what? I bought two, one for me and one for my wife. And when friends come over, I give them the, the cheap glasses because they might break them. So, but I'll tell you, they taste, the wine does taste even better. Okay, look at this beautiful wine. Look at this. So, folks, you have got right there a real, real country dish. Cold, winter day, autumn day. Look at this. You eat this, I swear you will walk through walls. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you, Johnny Rivers. Thank you, Shied folks down there in Greenfield. Um, and we'll see you next time.